Here we go, everyone. A feature request that people have been asking for since Lumion 1, maybe 2. Ladies, gentlemen, and everybody else, we can now throw gloss maps into our Lumion scene. It's pretty glorious, I'm not going to lie. I always thought that this was incredibly dumb that you couldn't do this, and it pissed people off. When I first started using Lumion, I just like could not wrap my head around the fact that you couldn't put a gloss map in. And then when I found out that you could add it in, you just had to use Photoshop, I thought that was even stupider because the whole point of Lumion is made for people that are in a hurry and or want to, you know, kind of use it professionally as like an architect or something. So the fact that uh, you're going to get them to go into Photoshop and do this every single time, it's not going to happen. It's uh, it was very bizarre, but now it is added in. So let's make our first glorious texture with a gloss map. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in the next video how to take the Lumion material and transport it wherever you want, making the actual file format. And the Lumion devs absolutely hate that I do this. So just be aware of that because we're going to be going into the Lumion files. It, you don't have to be a hacker. It's nothing difficult, but we're just going to be ripping it directly. Uh, they put some functionality in, but that's slow. With my method, you can just take it all out at once. So... All right, let's let's add something to the ground here. Choose a color map. That's kind of that's kind of weird that actually you click on that and that pops up. I feel like I should just click this and it should just import a new texture. I don't know, maybe there's something I'm missing with that, but that seems kind of strange to me. So let's go wood floors. This is, I'm going to use an iMesh wood floor here. So let's do 4K. I'll bring in the diffuse map. I'll bring in the normal map. Oh, so the reflectivity, you can add in a reflection map or a reflective map, however you want to say it. But I would just be aware that that doesn't really work how you want it to in Lumion. Um, for the mass reflectivity, I actually think that that works best if you use a metalness map because it's just white and black and Lumion reads that better. But I'm not going to focus on that. We're going to go gloss map. Now, this is something that is extremely important. And I cannot emphasize this enough to you. If you have never really used roughness or gloss maps before, they are the same thing. But the roughness map is the inverted gloss map. So if I open this up and you have a roughness map, you can't use that right away. What I have to do here is I have to open up Photoshop and I really feel like, so the gloss map they added in, I don't want to complain about that. I think it's really cool, but it'd be cool if you could actually add in a invert node or even something that if someone puts in a file name with the name roughness in it, it automatically inverts it because people do have, I think a bit of a hard time with this. Um, you know, a lot of people don't want to use Photoshop. This is still far better, um, but I, I will just say this. If you download the Blender if you download a model from Polygon and you get the Blender version, you're going to have a color map in it, which you need, except it's going to have a roughness map more often than not. So I think you might be able to go into your generic folder that comes with Polygon models and the gloss will be in there. Uh, maybe I'll make a video on that, just kind of updating it because I am really happy that they added it in. Uh, it's still just, it may still just confuse people a little bit, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the roughness and I'm just going to drag it into Photoshop. I'm also going to quickly show you how to do this with a free version, because if you don't have Photoshop, then you, you can still do it. No problem. I just, I personally like Photoshop. So I want to do it with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop this in and we're going to click on this layer. Control I. Now we have a gloss map. I'm going to go export quick export is PNG. I'm going to change this to glossiness. And once we do that, I'm also going to show you something quickly. I'm going to pull up photo P here. And I am then going to drop in the roughness map. As I said, this is a free tool. So you just come in here, control I, and we're going to export as PNG. And so the width, the height, everything looked good there. Let's save this. And this will just go in your downloads. Rename this. 
I wanted to show people that quickly if you don't have Photoshop. However, Photoshop is the one that I like using. So what I can show you now is what it is going to look like with the gloss map in. So this is just the normal map we can see here. We can change the map scale on it. There are just some weird reflections. That, that's just because of the way the tree's coming in. It almost looks like the, the map's not moving, but it is. Uh, you can kind of see that there. It might just be hard to see on the video. But if I drop in a gloss map and I go and find it in my correct folder, glossiness, then you can see that that makes a big difference right away. Now we can do everything inside of Lumion without having to go to Photoshop for the most part. Um, I do think it is still very important to be able to know how to manipulate your map to get exactly what you need. If for some reason uh, you're maybe downloading one of my old uh, videos with Targa maps, those will still work. Uh, I believe if you have the, I believe if you have the normal map, what you can do is we'll just open up Photoshop one last time. And I will just mess around with this because this is something that if, if people do prefer doing this and they have a workflow that included this, it, it doesn't mean that it's completely gone. You can still do the nesting trick where you make a gloss mask like before. So let's take that and then we drop the glossiness in. Control A, Control X. So we will add in a channel, Control V, click that on, file, save as, and then we are going to go to Targa. I'm going to call this normal gloss mask. If you don't see the Targa option, make sure that both of your maps are set to uh, eight bits a channel and also that they're in RGB mode. How you do this is you can just go to a layer and you can go image mode. I think this is changes for the whole canvas, but the point being RGB color, eight bits. That's how you need it to come into Lumion. And if I flip that back on, you can see that that is good. And yeah, we have exported the target, so we should be good. So I'm just going to cancel this. Don't want to save it. And I don't really care about saving that because I already have it. So let's take a look at what it looks like. This is what it looks like with just the normal map. So the gloss is just set to one. Let's throw on the mask and we should see this change. Yeah. So then there you go. Now it is looking closer to how it should. And that is the entire video. I will make a quick video right after this one showing people how to actually extract uh, Lumion files from Lumion. It's very, very easy. And this is how I make all of my, uh, you know, free asset videos that I've linked before. I don't do it the way of like Lumion's like, oh, save the material, load the material. Uh, you can actually just kind of go through in the back door with that and just like kind of, you know, go behind the scenes, and just take it out, drop it where you need it to go. It is far faster that way. And I greatly prefer doing it. The Lumion devs don't like when I do it, as I said, but I am going to show you and I hope that you won't bother them too much with it. If you have a problem with it, you should probably ask me first. Um, it, it is fairly straightforward, but you know, just in case, uh, I don't mind answering those questions. I am going to end the video there though. I hope everyone enjoyed it. This is a feature we've been asking for for a long time. So I hope that it helps your workflow. And I hope I can see you in some future videos. If you're not subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you could do that so that you will know when I release more. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next video.